Good Monday evening, Trinidad and Tobago. Most of you would not be expecting a live video. Tonight we were on the radio this morning. But a lot of things have been happening in the country today. And we have to address all of them as it pertains to issues that are so important to work that, that is being done by the Progressive Empowerment Party or that is affecting the ability of the Progressive Empowerment Party to do its work. Now, many of you would know that we are in something of a war with media fighting for our rights as a political organization according to the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Somebody just messaged me on my email mail out where I sent the, in, the um, information in support of the Commissioner of Police because the Media Association just put out a release against Gary's position this morning. We had to deal with all of that. We had to address all of that this afternoon. I want to come at it from this point of view and I put this in the public space. Many of us in Trinidad and Tobago, the most of us that are not in the criminal underworld or law enforcement, many of us, the first time we met, when I say met, knew of a character named Berkey Burke was when Marley McDonald was fired by Keith Christopher Rowley, who had requested that the President of the Republic, Anthony Carmona, swear her in as a minister, fired her, because she took Berkey Burke as her guest. And Berkey Burke was able to be photographed between Marley McDonald and His Excellency the President. And Keith Rowley said Berkey Burke was a criminal known to law enforcement. And Marlene was dismissed it, within a day. CNC3 knew that. CNC3 covered that. CNC3 and Hema Ramkisun were very aware of that instance. In the last 14 to 21 days, it seems that the media in Trinidad and Tobago that was forever going down a dark path has blown itself up. The Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago is fighting for a relevance it does not have. Media, believe it or not, in Trinidad and Tobago is now viewed as the bad guy. And Emil Crown took me to task for that. But I am not responsible for the media's reputation with rank and file Trinidad and Tobago. I don't have that much power. And watching the unfolding of what is taking place today, what unfolded with the Hema Ramkisun interview, if we start, if we put some pins on the board, if the first pin we put on the board is Berkey Burke, Marlene McDonald, Anthony Kamuna. Berkey Burke, his presence in the appointment was used as the reason to terminate Mali. Those of you who just arrived on the video, please share the video. Let everybody know we're here. We're addressing this media issue today. So those who arrived, those who, those who saw Berkey Burke for the first time knew him because the Prime Minister of the Republic indicted him. I want to tell you how far that goes. Eh? I tell you how far that goes. People's National Movement met this weekend and expelled Harry Rabunanan. Hey, man, I'm going to keep track of all the pins on this board. But I want you to hear this. Because you really need to hear this. The movement voted to expel suspended long-standing member and financier Harry Ragunanan from the party. The PNM's general council met at Balize House on Saturday where following the meeting, Chairman Tom Imbert said none of the general council members voted against the disciplinary committee's recommendation. On October 14, 2017, Ragunanan was suspended from the party following allegations that he was involved in corrupt practices with respect to procurement of Public Transport Service Corporation buses. Raghunanan has denied the allegations leveled against him. Now I want to say something to Trinidad and Tobago on that issue. Harry Raghunanan is the man who put in the public space procurement irregularities with the Cabo Star, the forehand massage and the Galleons passage. Stick a pin and leave it there. How could the PNM hear me? Hear me clear. How could the PNM move to expel a member 
considered a financier of the party for corruption, a criminal act in the procurement of PTSD buses, apologies, that is misbehavior in public office, conspiracy to defraud the people of Trinidad and Tobago, fraudulent conversion. It is a myriad. It is a myriad of wrongdoing. How could the PNM have grounds to expel long-standing financier Harry Rabunana and that not attract the attention of the police, the Anti-Corruption Bureau, the Fraud Squad? How, how is that possible? How is that possible? How is it possible that you have sufficient grounds to expel, hear me, the people who met to expel this man wear other hats like, like Minister of National Security and Prime Minister. How did they have the Minister of Finance Corporation soul who should be the principal bearer of evidence for the police? How is it Possible. I am asking Trinidad and Tobago this. Let us not, in all the brouhaha and all the bacchanal, let us, let us not lose sight of critical thinking here. PNM, if you have sufficient evidence to expel Harry Ragunana, how is this not a criminal matter attracting the Trinidad and Tobago police service? Stick up it. I want to make a point. I want to also add to that. Kamala Passad Bissessa triggered a never before used clause in the Constitution to remove Herbert Volney as a sitting member of Parliament. But before she did that, she fired him as a minister for his criminal acts surrounding Section 34. And that never attracted the attention of the police. She fired him for criminal misbehavior in public office. And that never attracted. Those two pins on the board are not coming off the board until action is taken. The PNM just added Harry Ragunanan to Herbert Volney. I now have those two pieces on that section of the board called questionable firings that should attract the attention of the police. Come back to Keith Rowley and Berkey Burke. How could Keith Rowley be judge, jury, and executioner? Boss Marlene Trout, after she was appointed, because Berkey Burke was present at her swearing in, and it not have enough evidence for that to be a police matter. You see, I want to show you something. Politics, governance, state, leadership, and the operation of the country becoming a muddy brew. And we are losing sight of where the authority in this country lies. And I want you to understand when I say that Keith Rowley committed a crime when he took $3 million. He took $3 million that he was not authorized to spend and gave it to Maxi Coffee, who was not authorized to receive it. That was a criminal act. We are, we are in murky water in this country. The opposition have no idea what they're doing. They only waiting to get back a next chance to finish teeth what they didn't teeth the first time. Forget them. They're irrelevant. The UNC have nothing to do with what we're talking about. We fire them. They're supposed to be gone. They're, some of them are supposed to be the subject of serious police investigation. What we're talking about now is the PNM. Talking about this. You see, I want Emil Crumb and Matt to know that we understand what is going on in the country and no amount of, of obfuscation, no amount of misdirection, deflection, moving the goalposts, going to change fact. And we will rely on law. Because in situations like this, where everybody is making this stuff up as they go along, we have to be guided by the law of Trinidad and Tobago, and the supreme law more than any other law. So, so the CNC tree that covered Marlene's swearing in and swearing out because of Berkey Burke, 
was able to bring Berkey Burke into a telephone interview with Hema Ramkisu. So CNC3 knew that he was of sufficient character to warrant none other than the Prime Minister firing a minister just because he was present at her swearing in. CNC3 and Hema Ramkisun were pellucidly clear on that fact, yet chose to argue about balance and fairness. I don't want to lose the trend of this conversation. But if you are going to give people suspected of criminal wrongdoing, you told Gary Griffith this morning that you were going after the truth. That is not your mission. That is not your job. Gary Griffith told you your job is to provide balance. You have a role in society. The information that you're supposed to bring is not supposed to be the undoing of society. But that is what the media has been doing for a long time. The media has been hiring itself out as hired guns, attackers for hire, people to assassinate characters, destroy your brand, destroy your name, marginalize you, minimize you, hide your political party from the public in direct contradiction of the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. But let us stay on point. CNC3 was aware. Don't get away from that. So how does Hema Ramkisun and her producer Carissa Lee come to be in possession of contact information for Berkey Burke? I ask again, how does Hema Ramkisun and her producer, Carissa Lee, come to be in possession of contact? How does that happen? How do you link that up? If I want to get onto somebody, I will call somebody that I know that I think should have access to that person. Who was the go-between? How did that link get established? that you could set up, that you could set up an interview on national television with somebody that the prime minister told you is a criminal, such a criminal that his presence at Marlene McDonald's swearing in resulted in her getting her throat bust in 24 hours. Now, let's be real. You can't have you can't have your cake and eat it too. How that saying came around was you can't eat your cake and still have it. That's what it means. You can't eat your roti and still have your roti. Roti done, roti gone. That's what it means. You cannot be a paragon of virtue. I don't hate it out. And I want you and Tobago to explain to me this. And I don't know what happens when you're watching back the video at the end because I waited out that downtime video. I want to ask you and Tobago, how could the video device that is broadcasting to you be running on a digital feed while my laptop, which I am using for information, running on a B mobile feed and both of those feeds stop at the same time. Was that possible? How's that possible? But I want to say this and again, and this is where we had stopped when they stopped. So please share the video to bring those back on board who just got bumped off when they did whatever it is they just did. Hema Ramkisun and CNC3 are now in a sticky wicket. Let's hear why. The front page, I'm not going to call the news this name, but again, expected. What I, what I would like people to, for us to again go back to the media, it was on the front page, I'm not going to call the news this name, but again, you find the, the attorney for one of the individuals and you use his. He said, I don't want to call Newsday's name, eh? but Newsday, Newsday is the deep end of this dirty pool eh? 
It is the news day that is giving comfort to every two-bit knuckle dragger, Amy Crumb, Paolo Kernahan, and every one of them who are trying to make points with whoever to attack Philip Edward Alexander and the Progressive Empowerment Party. The news day has lost sight of not where the wicked is, you know. The news day game in the Oval. His view. What is it that the media has? What is, you know, it's something that I notice here is that sometimes we look after all of the rights of the, of the criminals and not the rights of the 1.3 million law abiding citizens. The, the, we saw it with, with uh, CNC3 last night. You go all the way to Larry, you to find an individual, you go to speak to Burki. Um, right here on CNC3, all sort of different individuals. Baka, Burki, Spanish, everybody, anybody. Lima McLeod Wilkinson, she's a deputy political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party. She asked today, if you're given balance to people accused of wrongdoing, how come in any of those interviews you didn't contact victims? How come? Expected. What I, what I would like people to, for us to, again, going back to the media, it was on the front page, I'm not going to call the news this name, but again, you find the, the attorney for one of the individuals and you use his, his view. What is it that the media has? What, you know, it's something that I notice here is that sometimes we look after all of the rights of the, of the criminals and not the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens. The, we, we saw it with, with uh, CNC3 last night. You go all the way to Larry, you to find an individual, you go to speak to Burki. Um, right here on CNC3, all sort of different individuals of questionable repute. I wonder if Bin Laden's son, if he has a son, he comes out for cut. Side of ISIS, we, um, we are being misunderstood. We need to understand at times this is not a level playing field. This is good versus evil. This is a situation where all police officers are working very hard and then the media now to sell three dollars extra for a newspaper. We have to find somebody who decides to defend an individual. The same individuals who are concerned about their daughters being. Um, uh, I want to ask yeah. about that because I think the same, I think those same individuals will have the same feeling when gang, when gang members call hits on the, on, on the children. What is most the children, uh, your, your child, obviously, which is on Acceptable. What about when it is people call hits on the, on the children of, um, of, of the, 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 how do you think those, those parents felt when their children were killed? But these men were not charged, the ones that were released. And I, I, I know we'll pick up on this topic, but I want to ask you to... Hear that? Hear that? Judge and jury, Hema Ramkisun is defending her right to be wrong. That's what she's doing here. And according both and um, two newspapers, they had the story this morning. Daughters traumatized by police in the rain. Are you? He's accusing them of not allowing. Yes, obviously, as he digs deep to find these persons to do interviews, because as you will have seen of CNC three, give the criminals, give other persons their side. There, what? And it's always good. Uh, who, who's, who's after here? Bin Laden's grand, granddaughter. Let's go back to. And he's right in his sarcasm. Why you didn't bring Bin Laden granddaughter? You have used, you have sunk to the bottom of the pit. The media's agenda seems to be ratings at whatever cost. Story and the why, no, I mean, why is, what does CNC3 have to always find individuals deep, deep inside? Is it a matter? We ask him for the longest while, what is CNC3's agenda? Will be is it a matter that when it is we we, we, we went into um beat them and all CNC three could find is three guys with their pants hanging down? What is it with CNC three? What is it? What is it? Is, is CNC three the, 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 cor the corporate communication unit for for wrongdoing? Bandit voice, the bandit voice of Trinidad Tobago, the Progressive Empowerment Party, and people who are standing up for right, good, and decent. We blocked, but Bucky Burke and Backer. Will the matter be investigated? Would CNC3 stop trying to, to try to find an, a level playing field between uh, good versus evil? You understand that also, like you. The They're not going to stop blocking the video. Every time it is interrupted, I will wait. So if you are not bumped off, wait it out too with me and keep sharing it when we come back. I waited right there. Nothing went on while we were waiting. Evil. You understand that also, like you, the media has a right to show all sides of the story and we only have an option. You see, this is where they go wrong. This is where they try to misdirect from the point. 
that yes, you have a right to show all sides to every story, but where's the balance? Where's the balance? When you attack those who are trying to do good in society and celebrate those who are doing wrong, it comes across like you have an agenda. Did you notice that the media in, in any of the, in the free world, you never see them ask Bin Laden's nephew or gang leader and have them in, in prominence or have an attorney? Uh, do you think if they stop being featured in the media that these people will lose their level of credibility or their influence? That is what you all are doing. You all are giving them credibility. You all are giving them prominence. You all are giving them a, a, a sense of... All them little black children growing up thinking, I want to be a gang leader too. I want to be a gang leader too so I can go and hear my show. That's what you're doing. And you're allowing young person to say, hey, that's my boss. Look, he's on newspapers, on your piece on CN3, CNT3. Again, and so the fact of the matter is, you, the media, you don't have a job to play, and it is much more than, than, than getting $3 sold for an extra newspaper. Do you think the media is at war with the police service? I think the media doesn't they need to understand their role and function, just as the law association, and the law association sends out a relief. See that statement? Gary don't know how true that statement is. Gary don't know how true that statement he just made is. That the media needs to understand its role and its function in society. I want to dispel this myth that society must have a media if your media is corrupt. We must have a fair and relevant voice of the people. That's what the media is for. Without speaking to other members of the law association, without speaking to the commissioner of police and making very foolish comments, it shows that we need to understand our responsibility. This is a war out there. We have a country to defend and the media, it is not a status, uh, it's not a matter of balance, it's not a matter of, well, let us try final and equal playing field. This is a situation of good versus evil and everybody needs to step up to the plate and understand the their Everybody needs to step up to the plate and understand what is taking place here. As the commissioner of police resonating with the public, saying pretty much what I said a couple weeks ago. I said it a couple weeks ago. We've been fighting this war for over a year, for more than that. The Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, Jump out yourself. <clears throat> but first, to those of you following me who have been terrorized by this government, its attorney general, and their rampant rampage through civil rights and civil liberties, human rights and civil liberties. Today, freedom of speech is a fundamental pillar of a democratic society and individuals should not be prevented from making statements which may be true regarding matters of important interest to the public, says High Court Judge Justice Frank Sipasad. Today, game change. Because that you can rely on. That now becomes something that you can refer to. Those individuals should only be restrained when it is pollution that the statements being complained of are unarguably defamatory and issued in circumstances which indicated that they were made without legal justification. He said, Michael Cuomo just gone out of business. Michael Cuomo, whole work is to take anybody who stand up against anything to court. I am going to rely on Justice Frank Sipasad's judgment with every matter brought against me now. Because those two paragraphs make all the points you need to make. Those, own, those individuals should only be restrained where it is pollution that the state wants. Let me tell you something now. We are being drowned in legal fees and that's what they're trying to do. Using the courts as a big stick against people. Knowing full and well that you could outspend them. is an arms race for cash and lawyers. Matt. The media association today. Now, I want to go and find the actual release because on the actual mat release, not one, not one, not one comment, not one in support of Matt. Not one. Not Emil Crown, not Paulo Kernhan, nobody. Nobody so mad as to jump out the cell phone to go onto that map release and put a name there. Because that will be the end of their journalistic career. You know why? Because Trinidadians have reached the end of the rope. You know everybody saying long rope for Maga Goat? Well, we reach the end. We reach the end. This is the time that longer than twine. We reach where we go in. 
We reach where we were always going. The media in Trinidad Tobago is in trouble. The trouble that Emil Crumb tried to pretend was as a direct result of people standing up for themselves against media abuse. Not that. The media is in trouble because the public, the average person in Trinidad and Tobago does not trust one of them. Not Kamal George's, not Gold. Stay with me, people. Stay with me when they block the video. Stay with me even if the video cuts off. I have access to three different feeds. It will come back on. Stay on the page. Stay with me. I don't know what happens after. I'm going to watch this video after this. Because so far, there's been three cuts. Does it have a long lag? Or does it just skip to where it is? Because I am waiting. As it stops, I stop in. And I'm waiting. The people don't trust the media. The people don't trust anybody in media. They don't trust Hema. When I took Hema Ramkisun to task following that hatchet job against Felicia Holland and Michelle Davis, when I took her to task, when I took her to task, and Sabga News Network had to go and find a fake women's group that is the founder of the group was an employee of Sabga. I mean, people ridicule them for that behavior. People, every time it comes back, share the post, right? Share the video. Every time it comes back, share the video to let people know that we're here. But, but, but the writing was on the wall from them. The writing was on the wall from them because Trinidadians, rank and file Trinidadians, stood with me, stood with PP. The majority of people in the tens of thousands went, viewed the video, told him, you're full of shit. Told CNC3, we see you. We get it now. They told them, the people of Trinidad Tobago say, we see what you're saying. We know that you're lying. We side with Philip Alexander and the Progressive Empowerment Party. And if CNC3 had any sense at all, they'd have let that die right there. But they sent Emil Crumb to attack me in Newsday. And he has been eviscerated, excoriated, and ridiculed for that. Paolo, come today. Paolo, come today. To say, hear me, hear? the Philip Edward Alexander, who is in court with five members of the 1%, eh? five. Philip Alexander, the, the, the elite's champion, Philip, to, to try. To make me into a 1%. They're running out of things to say, you know. They're running out of things to say. And like when they suck that fat out of Palo, the most of it come out of his brain. Because if he had used his brain, he would have realized, he would have checked to see the people, like, like this fool, this other journalist, who, or journalistic wannabe, who trying to pretend that what we said was racist. When they attack the members, the members don't run away. The members just close ranks. You see, it takes a lot, Paolo. And you wouldn't know this because you don't have courage. You don't have back backbone. You don't have balls. You don't have belly. You don't understand what it takes for a citizen of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to tell UNC and PNM, go to hell. I want change. I am standing with change. Put on that orange jersey and do so publicly. You think you're a little jackass? column attacks against those people going to move them these people dig their heels in partner they're risking all manner of victimization they're risking all manner of loss well your name was on the HTC. remember what jack warner said remember when jack warner and gypsy tell people they vote for me or they're not gonna get that was misbehavior in public office you cannot take public funds and separate it by politics that is the job of the equal opportunity commission but they don't this was the Media Association's release February 18, 2019. Please, when, every time it comes back, share the video. Hit share, share it on your wall, share it in the groups, let people know we're not going anywhere. The Media Association of Trinidad Tobago would like to put on record that the duty of all journalists is to report all sides of a story, not just selected point, few points. Hmm. We should stop right there. Because if the Media Association of Trinidad Tobago believes that it is the duty of all journalists to report all sides of a story, not just selected viewpoints. Where were they?
for the 100 Saturday meetings we've had? Where were they for the 21 public rallies that we've had? Where were they for the first and second anniversaries of the Progressive Empowerment Party? Where were they for the launching of the Port of Spain office? Where were they for the launching of the South office? Where will they be on March 23rd? They're already invited for the launch of the North Hub. Where were they? All of the issues that we've championed, all the positions we put in the public space, the Progressive Empowerment Party is taking down a 1% organization, deliberately breaking the law, and we are systematically prosecuting it through the public without the aid of the media. When it comes to fruition, when the state finally takes action, how will the media cover it? How will the media cover it? It will be biblical. It will be epic and it will be precedent setting. Pep has an app, Pep app. Go on any of the app stores and you can download it free of charge. Type in PEP, APP. While the Commissioner of Police is free to express his opinion on how journalists conduct their duties, Matt would like to remind the Commissioner of Police that freedom of the press is a cornerstone of our democracy. Really? Really, Matt? Freedom of which press? Freedom of government press? or freedom of the people's press, because we want to know, if you think that all press is press, and that we are so stupid enough to believe that government propaganda is the press freedom that the framers of the Constitution was talking about, you know another thing coming. Mr. Griffith has repeatedly used his rights to freedom of speech to sarcastically refer to media houses and journalists he does not agree with. Yes, yes, gloriously yes. And I want to remind you, it was his freedom of speech that he used. You said it correctly. The minister, the minister, Mr. Griffith has repeatedly used his right to freedom of speech. And that is what I told him. And that is what I told him, you crumb. And that's what I'm telling Paolo Kernahan tonight. Your right to a free press doesn't trump my right to free speech. No way, no how. In fact, let me stick a pin right there. I want you to hear this. In the order of the rights enshrined, chapter one of the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the rights enshrined A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. All of those are the rights enshrined. The ones that are important to this conversation are E, the right to join political parties and to express political views. G, freedom of movement. I, freedom of thought and expression. J, freedom of association and assembly. And K, freedom of the press. The bottom of the barrel. The last, not the first. And I believe that it was written that way, deliberately, so, so that media does not lose sight of what is important in society. It is hereby recognized and declared that in Trinidad and Tobago they have existed and shall continue to exist without discrimination by reason of race, origin, color, religion, or sex, the following fundamental human rights and freedoms, namely the right of the individual to life, liberty, security of the person and enjoyment of property and the right not to be deprived thereof except by due process of law. That was A. B is the right of the individual to equality before the law and the protection of law. C is the right of the individual to respect for his pri private family life. D, the right of the individual to equality of treatment from any public authority in the exercise of any function. E, the right to join political parties and to express political views. F, the right to a parent or guardian to provide a school of choice for his child. G, freedom of movement. H, freedom of conscience and religious belief and observance. I, freedom of thought and expression. J, freedom of association and assembly. And K, freedom of the press. To the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, with all respect, when you say that Mr. Griffith has repeatedly used his right to freedom of speech to sarcastically refer to media house and journalists he doesn't agree with, that is his right. That is his right. That is his right. Everybody has that right. 
If Gamer Ramki soon behaves like a pig, I have that right to say that she carried herself like an unethical pig. That is our right. She does a job and she has to do that job to standards befitting the ethics of the profession. And if she fails to do that, we have a right to call her out on it. To the commissioner, we say it is your right to question any report in the print and broadcast media. However, Matt suggests the commissioner be more temperate in his choice of words so as to not create the impression he is not in support of a free press. You see, that is bullshitology. Because Gary, if he was not in support of a free press, would not have made himself available to every talk show that he does. There are people in government and even people in public that used to tell him he's talked too much. They used to call him Garrelous Gary. They love him now because they see what he really can do. Those of us who were standing with him way back in 2013 and 2014 who understood what he was capable of then have been telling you this man is going to paint a masterpiece. So for you to say that he comes across as he is not in support of free press, Gary Griffith as commissioner of police has put out more public media releases in three months than Stephen Williams did in his entire acting career. So Matt, again, miss us with your bullshit. Matt's recent conversation with the police commissioner was one we felt positive about and we take the opportunity to remind him that he is not at war with the media, nor is the media at war with him or the police service. Bullshit. When you use media time to undermine the work, when he said to you that the job is good versus evil, he wasn't lying. And when you use media time and public airwaves to broadcast filth and bullshit that you know to be supporting and giving comfort to wrongdoers, you are at war with everybody who is fighting for a better Trinidad and Tobago. We support the good work of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and will continue to report on their fight against crime. How? How do you do that? When do you do that? Unless they pay for commercials, like we have to pay for commercials, when do you go out of your way to highlight? Matt, when does any journalist or media house, I am asking you, and I don't work for the Commissioner of Police, but I'm asking you, when do you go out of your way to do that? Because you see, I've been saying for a decade now, Police officers are the only people in society that get dressed to go to work and put their lives in danger for people they will never know. And we have had a responsibility to our police officers from the start. And perhaps if we had done a better job at that, there would, be, there would not be as much corruption in the police service as there is today. Likewise, the journalists of Trinidad and Tobago will continue to highlight the views of persons who may disagree with the manner in which police conduct their duties. First of all, we have no real journalists in Trinidad and Tobago. We have media workers. We have people with pens and papers and recording devices that takes information and goes back to Sabga News Network and Massa Media and Castani and Chinley in Newsday and say, this is what we get. Who all you want to propagandize today? The press will not muzzle these people. If the commissioner disagrees with the views expressed, we will report on that also. Bullshit. Because we've sent out a release, and I'm going to read that release to you right now. Having said that, Matt reminds reporters and journalists of the need to be fair and balanced in all reporting. When we saw that, a release was quickly drafted. And it is headlined, Matt release on the commission of police exposes the hypocrisy of Matt and the media. One of the members of the Progressive Empowerment Party, one of our caretakers in the South, has received death threats on her and her family's life today for being politically involved. The media association, journalists and media operatives in Trinidad and Tobago have not weighed in on that matter. The Progressive Empowerment Party has put out a release. Matt release on the Commission of Police exposes the hypocrisy of Matt and media in TNT. If this is what the media association and journalists really believe and are to be guided by, how then do they explain the deliberate media blackout against the Progressive Empowerment Party and the unconstitutional refusal to carry our stories in the news? Perhaps the media association, the journalists and operatives it represents should take a look at it and their own track record before pontificating on what should ultimately be the correct role of media 
but not one that is practiced in Trinidad Tobago. The release from which this opening paragraph was taken was, closes with the line having said that Mac reminds reporters and journalists of the need to be fair and balanced in all reporting. As of today and over the last few days, the PEP has garnered almost 800 signatures on a petition calling on the media to do just that. Philip Edward Alexander, political leader, Progressive Empowerment Party. Now that has been mailed to the media and it will be supremely ironic if they refuse to run it. To be free and fair to the PEP, that's a media release. And if you refuse to run it, Matt, the commissioner of police and everybody else in this country will see you and all of your media lemmings and journalistic pretenders for what they are. Pretending to be real media. Pretending to be real media. I have been looking at the entire social media feed Candace Barrett wrote, interview a gang leader to find out how taken advantage of they are. Poor souls. But you don't interview the police to get their side. Journalism at its best, yes? Our criminals always have more rights than law-abiding citizens. I heard her response as she was looking for the truth. Damn dotish people in this place. The media in this country is such shit. Somebody else wrote, his children are traumatized, but those who are getting shot, raped, robbed, have, robbed, have their families murdered. They don't matter. Big bleeping stupid. To the Media Association of Trinidad and Tobago, you have been found wanting. The public of Trinidad and Tobago have ruled on you that everything that you have done in for all, however long it has taken you to get you to the point where the average person in Trinidad and Tobago no longer has any faith in you will result now. I am telling you this. This is the forecast. You all have accelerated your, your commitment to very bad decisions and by going after the people superhero double G today you've cut your own throats because Trinidad and Tobago is now going to boycott media in a way that they've never boycotted media before they are going to boycott media. They are going to stop buying newspapers. The people of Trinidad and Tobago already do not watch your news shows. CNC Trend, TV6, we watch Heyman for zero in the morning and we get dressed to go about our business, mostly for whatever bacchanal comes with it. But generally, generally, most of us get our news and our information, even more opinion shaped by social media because we understand that what is taking place on traditional media, what is being peddled to us by Sabga News Network and Massey Media. Do you know that I received a pre-action protocol letter that wants to pretend that me calling Guardian Media that Sabga owns, that is run by Nicholas Sabga, that my referring to it as Sabga News Network is an insult? Did, did Celia and company think it through? That they made it sound like the word Sabga is an insult? The name Sabga? Does Guardian Media and Celia... Does, Guardian News, does the Guardian media and Sabga News think CNC3 and CLA think the word Sabga is an insult? Because that's what they said. That's what they said. Justin N.C. Pablo and Sean Kirk, two obvious PNM sycophants, jump out on the media tread to try and attack anybody that is speaking out against media association and they are demonstrating that damnable PNM education that has so many of them CPEP journalists working for the money but can't do the work placeholder placeholder none of the people none none of the people who have come out on that thread have done so in support of Matt. None. And Matt needs to take responsibility for that. Nobody in Trinidad and Tobago, nobody cares. 
Nobody cares about the media association's opinion on this matter. And who is responsible for that? Who? The journalists themselves. The media workers themselves. They ultimately are responsible. When you hear jokers and pretenders and, and legalistic wannabes like Amy Crown come to pretend that anybody who speaks out against the media is anybody that stands up and speaks out against journalistic practices, malpractice, and the silence of the media association on important issues are deemed to be anti-freedom of the press. But look how this worked out. That you have used press as a club to beat the public and now look at well, as you could see, social media, this live video, is under tremendous attack. And we will address it as much as we can. We are working on other things to make it better. But between now and then, we have to tolerate. We have to tolerate what takes place. But Trinidad to and to all of you who have stuck it out while the video sticks, I appreciate you. We will bring it to a, we'll bring it to a close.